Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi. Uh, today we are going to deal with uh, a very beautiful field line question, right? So you could see that on the left of the screen, there is a field map that I have uh, taken from a computer simulation available on internet uh, of three point charges, identical point charges placed on the vertices of a regular hexagon. And this, this particular computer diagram on the left depicts the possible field lines, okay? So I have changed it into a theoretical question on our understanding of the electric field lines. You could see on the right of the diagram, I have drawn a system which depicts the three six point charges at the vertices of a regular hexagon figure, okay, right? So uh, let me give you the full glory of this particular field map so that you can enjoy it a bit more before we dive into the actual question. Okay, so this is it. So you, if you carefully observe uh, that these circles that it's the this computer simulation is depicting are the point charges from where you could see the field lines are originating. Okay, right. And this is the center point where there is a null point or the neutral point where the field goes to zero. So you could see the field lines are emanating from each one of these and they're trying to terminate at infinity. Okay, right, so, and uh, you could see these yellow circles, they form the equipotential surface. So the purple lines are the field lines and the yellow circles are the uh, equipotential surfaces. Okay, so the whole point here is about the field line. So let con let's concentrate on that. Can you see one of the field line coming from here, right, going towards the adjacent neighbor, right? So let's say these are two neighboring charges. There could be one field line which starts off the, on, at this particular place, trying to direct itself towards the neighbor, but it won't go straight. You could see there is a bending of that particular field line. So this beauty of a map inspired me to actually make a question of this kind. So let me give you the formal wording of the question. So the field line that I was depicting in the field map, I have pre-drawn it here. We could see it is initially directed towards this neighboring charge. But as you all know that the field at this different places will actually start taking a turn because of the presence of the other charges. So this field line will start taking a turn and curve itself to infinity. So the question is very simple as you could see, by what angle does this field line that I showed in the diagram deviate by the time it reaches the infinity. Okay, so this is the question. If you want to give it a try with the concepts that you have learned, um, please do so. And um, then you can follow the solution that I'm going to provide. So the whole idea of this uh, particular question is not only to uh, cover the concepts of the field lines, but also break some misconceptions about the term electric flux. Okay, All right. So let's move ahead. So I have, uh, again, pre-drawn some of the requirements for our problem solving. So you could see on the right, I have actually drawn that field line. Uh, this now is a tangent. You could see that this is the actual field line is drawn in a slightly thinner line. Okay, so I'm thinking this is the actual field line that you're talking about at which at the start, this thick red line represents its tangential direction. So this is the curving that has happened. So let's say this is the infinitely large distance and at which I have drawn an asymptote or a tangent at that place. And if I draw it back, I'm courageously showing it to be going through the center of the uh, regular hexagon. I'll try to uh, justify that. Okay, so for a person who is actually standing at infinity, uh, he would see all of this six charge distribution. Since he's at a very large distance, he could be well within his rights to think all these six charges are almost like a point charge system of six Q. Okay, so all the field lines to him when he's at large distance, when he draws them back, okay, so he should seem as if they're coming from a single central symmetrical point. Okay, so that's the whole idea of this dotted line. This dotted line is not the actual field, but every curved line, every curved line from here at a large distance, and we could argue that if I track them back as a tangent or an asymptote, they should all seem to be coming from a 6q point charge. Okay, so now this is the second way of looking at the things. Now, what I'm going to do to uh, calculate the angle through which this uh, line has curved is to calculate the number of lines in this particular plane of the diagram. So looking at only the plane of the diagram, I'll try to calculate how many number of lines are there between this blue asymptote and I've drawn a reference line for myself. Okay, so can you see from this point q charge another field line will come and this is not going to curve at all. So on all of this, which is already 
passing through the center if I extend it back, I think the field direction will not curve. So at this place, due to all six charges, the field direction would be this only. So this blue line is the actual field line, whereas this blue line is the asymptote drawn to this red curvature. Okay, so what I'll do is in case two of this calculation, I'll try to estimate how many lines are going to be there uh, between this blue and this blue lines. Okay, so there will be many more curved lines in this entire region. So let me share that region so that you can think of it very clearly. Okay, so this is that shaded region. In, in this blue shaded region, the person at infinity is going to calculate the number of lines. Now, let's also estimate the same thing in a different manner okay so in the first case what i'll do is i'll go very close to this charge okay so this is a zoom diagram of this particular point charge you could see that this particular red line that has come out at very close distance to this point q there won't be any curving of these lines so i argue that any close points of small q the influence of only small q will be there and rest of the phi q uh, will put almost negligible field in terms of what small this small q can do. So whatever field lines that are there in this angle, can you see in this angle, which is marked in this diagram as 120 degrees, a simple geometry that you can make out. So whatever field lines, if this point q charge was alone, would have happened in this 120 degrees would be the same number of field lines that would be in this particular region. That's a simple argument because the field lines will never intersect each other. So they will all have their own space to travel with. So my argument, if this small Q was alone, whatever number of field lines that are going to come within this 120 degree angle would be the same number of field lines this person at infinity in this region would be seeing. So I'll estimate that calculation in case one and case two and try to equate them. I, I'm thinking that the total number of lines coming from each of this Q charge is N, let's suppose. Okay, so right. So the idea is if each charge gives out if each charge Q gives out capital N number of lines in all directions. Okay, right. So we are talking about only planar diagram. Okay, so capital N number of lines, then if this capital N would come in all 360 direction degree direction in this particular plane, I keep repeating, it's only a planar assumption. Okay, so in 360 degree direction, if capital N number of lines come in 120 degree direction, case one calculation. So the case one calculation in that there would be N 120 degrees divided by 360 degrees is the fraction. That would be the one that would be calculated in case one. What happens in case two? Let's try to understand. Okay, so in case two, if I just demark it, in case two, how many number of lines? Now we should ask this person at infinity how he is feeling. He would say there is a 6q charge effectively at the center. And if this angle is theta, in this theta angle, he would be able to see uh, a fraction of a similar number of lines. So let me write that fraction very carefully now. So theta is the angle along which he's watching. Overall angle is 360 degrees along which he should have covered all of them. Now, how many lines will come out in all directions in this figure? How much is the charge responsible for all directions in this figure? I think it's a 6Q. So if Q gives rise to N number of lines in the two dimensional plane, then 6Q will give 6N number of lines. So I'll just multiply it with 6N number of lines. And I would argue that these two numbers should be simply equal to each other. Okay, so these two should be nicely equal to each other. Okay, so it's a big smile here. These two are equal to each other. So if these two are equated, then the value of theta simply comes out to be 120 deg degrees divided by six. Okay, so value of theta comes out to be 20 degrees. So let's take the 20 degrees into this particular diagram and estimate what our question was requesting us. If this theta is 20 degrees, can you see a small triangle? This may not be a triangle drawn to scale. Okay, so I'll just keep going. Okay, so if this is 60 degrees, which I'll mark for your convenience. Okay, so can you see and accept this is 60. And now that your theta is 20 degrees, you have an external angle here, right? 
it could, it could be easily marked. Okay, so this angle would be 100 degrees. It doesn't look like 100, but I hope you believe that it is 100 degrees. So this should be 100 because sum of angles in a triangle should be 180. So this is your 100. And I'll argue that this curve has gone this way. It should have gone in this direction, right? So this was the original direction and this is the final direction. Can you see the angle between the original and final direction is 100 degree. So your answer for a deviation is therefore 100 degrees. Okay. By now, some of you, I think uh, most of you would have understood what I just said, but some of you might have a question uh, in this particular solution that why not I'm taking a solid angle. Solid angle is one of the favorites and flux and all that Q by epsilon naught, all these things would be crossing through your mind. One very important thing that you need to understand in this particular solution is that there is no symmetry in 3D. Okay, so when you have two point charges, very famous question that you always solve is two point charges are joining by a line and use solid angle as because if only two point charges are there in a question, then there is a spatial symmetry, which means whatever happens in the field map in two dimensions will happen throughout if you rotate it about the line joining. Whereas whatever is happening here, remember all the six charges define a unique plane, the plane that you're watching the video right now. Whatever happens in this plane is unique to this plane. You cannot say the same thing is happening in every other plane. Or that means the number of field lines coming out from Q out of this particular screen are different from the one that are actually happening in this. So if if I say each Q here gives out capital N number of lines, this capital N is not Q by epsilon naught. That is in all directions, even out of the uh, uh, screen and all that. So this N is just a, uh, a, a proportionate quantity that I solved a two dimensional problem. The idea of solid angle will not therefore work in this particular problem okay so i hope you understand and appreciate what we got okay right and that's it thank you for watching see you in the next video